Hello and welcome to DCSA 10. In this video I'm going to demonstrate the functionality of the bearing point needles on the HSI. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to just line up for our current steer point and we're going to switch on our autopilot. Next we're going to just clean up our TAD. So we can see the detail of our steer points. That looks good. Okay. And lastly, I'm going to clean up our HSI so that our the indicators that we're not going to use for this tutorial are moved out of our way. So those two needles we're not interested in for the sake of this tutorial. What we are interested in is the two needles that we see currently facing north to south and showing up on the outside of the compass rows. Currently we can only see number one because it actually overlays number two and we'll show these separated in a moment. By default when we've come into the mission here in the air our steer point um, option is chosen on the navigation panel. With the steer point chosen, bearing point needle 2 and bearing point needle 1 both will point to the steer point. And remember the difference between a steer point and a waypoint. The steer point is the currently selected waypoint essentially. So on our current flight plan we have three waypoints 0, 1 and 2 and where are we our steer point is waypoint 1 at the moment. So I'm going to set up our TACAN to show how the bearing point 1 will be slaved when there's a TACAN selected and we're going to switch on to Sanaki, my favorite and it's 31 and we're going to make that quiet So, currently both needles are pointing in the same direction and now I'm going to switch on our TACAN. Actually before I switch that on I'm going to change the steer point to show the two needles following the new steer point. So we've changed it from 1 to 2 and we can see that the needles have gone from pretty much north to north of west. Please ignore what happened, what else ever happens, because I won't be dealing with this until a, a, a different video, a different tutorial. So we can see we're both pointing, uh, both needles are pointing towards our steer point, which is waypoint two. And now I'm going to switch on the TACAN. And you can see what happens. Steer point button switches off. We can't have both of these on together. We can only have one of these three, steer point, anchor point or tack can at one time. So we've now got tack can on and let's see what's happened. We now have separated our bearing point needles one and two and one is now pointing to what I expect is Sanaki which is out there somewhere slightly east of north and our bearing point needle two is looking to our steer point, our current steer point, which is waypoint 2. Note the distance on the distance meter here will always point to whichever of the options are highlighted here, irrespective of where the needles point. So if our steer point is switched off and our anchor point is switched off and TACAN is on, it means that the distance is the distance to our TACAN. Also note that the, the needle that's used for showing TACAN will always be bearing point needle 1 and the distance and the, the direction to or the bearing to our steer point will always be bearing point needle 2. So I'm going to switch off the TACAN and see what happens when all these are off 
Our boat needles go into a rest position indicated by an east-west um, location. So pretty much if they're in that position it means there's no information coming back to these, th these needles. So we're going to switch on the steer point and let's see what happens with our numbers. You can see when that's switched off we have a cover on our distance which also shows there's a problem with the navigation. So we switch back on our steer point we can see the two needles point in the same direction. And now we get a uh, distance to the steer point. So the distance is really coming from the, the needle one indication. So finally I'm going to look at an anchor point and on our tad here we've got a bullseye and I'm going to anchor that bullseye and I'm going to make it an, an SPI and if we switch from our steer point to our anchor point we can see the configuration now is our bearing point needle 2 still points to our current steer point and I'll show this by switching back to steer point 1 and we can see it follows that location and we can see the needle 1 shows our distance to our anchor point. So it's also worthy of note that the ILS has no bearing on what happens. We switch it on. The needles, the bearing point needles stay in the same location and the distance information remains the same. So that covers most of the relevant information about the use and functionality of the bearing point needles on the HSI. Thank you for watching.